Welcome to Easy Meaty Meals. I'm Emily C. Bunrung, and in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make my mom's pat kapal, also known as holy basil with beef, also known as Thai basil with beef. The ingredients you're going to need are grass-fed ground beef. You can always do slices of ground beef, even chicken, any type of animal protein that you prefer works as well in this recipe. Oyster sauce some thin soy sauce. You can always find this at your Asian grocery store. Some coconut sugar or honey or maple syrup, something to sweeten your pat kapow with. Some garlic. And we're gonna go outside to my garden to get the peppers and the holy basil. And, and traditionally in pat kapow, we're supposed to use Thai bird's eye chili, but I went to the market and they didn't look very fresh, so almost kind of moldy. So I'm actually growing serrano peppers instead. And mother said it works just as fine. Any kind of pepper that gives off some heat and that chili flavor. So we're gonna go pick some here. I don't know if you can see, but they're coming in. like this. So Serrano carries some, some heat. So uh, <laughs> Cody and I, we don't like it crazy spicy because we want to be able to taste the stuff and not just go <laughs> the whole time. So I'm going to just, um, let's just get four and see what that looks like. All right, now let's go get the holy basil. Okay, so this is holy basil. And usually it's hard to find holy basil at the market. Some people use Thai basil instead. It's really similar, but when you actually compare, holy basil is a lot more peppery. Um, but if you can't find that, you can use any kind of basil you can get on hand, Italian basil. And if you don't have any kind of basil, it's still gonna taste delicious. You don't need to have the basil in it. And because we have two pounds of grass-fed beef, we're gonna use a lot of basil in it. Now I'm gonna make the rice. All I've got is some jasmine rice and what you wanna do is you wanna rinse the rice at least three to five times until it's not very cloudy. And then the trick to cooking jasmine rice, my mom's trick is, I'm just gonna, it's gonna be hard to see it in the pot, but if this is the rice, to see how, to know how much water you're going to put is, <laughs> you're going to dip your finger right on top of the rice, and you wanna fill the water level up to the first knuckle line. And that's the trick. In the water. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's cut, can you see from there? Mm -hmm. So, right there is right where the water line should be. And also, if you don't have a rice cooker, you can always make rice that same method in a nonstick pan. So the first step is to mash the garlic and peppers together. Now, if you can see here, I have a mortar and pestle. If you don't have a mortar and pestle at home, it's okay. You can use a food processor or you can even just mash it, chop it with a knife. That works as well. Um, I like using a mortar and pestle because it really gets the oils and flavors out versus just chopping it. So we're just gonna peel some garlic. I've got a trick for you guys to get the peel off. All you do is place the garlic underneath the knife, the thick part of the knife, hit it, and then there you go. The peel. Sometimes my mom just even keeps the peel and she just <laughs> smashes it all together in the mortar and pestle and then I kind of have to take out um, peel from my mouth. <laughs> These garlic cloves are pretty small. My mom said to use five, but since they're tiny, I'm gonna use maybe eight or 10. I don't mind the garlic taste. It just tastes so much better when you add more garlic. Now we're gonna cut the stems off the serrano peppers. I'm actually very curious to see how hot these are because we know Thai bird chili peppers, the green, red, yellow ones, are hot. So I'm going to be a little gutsy and just take a little nibble. <laughs> Maybe because this is still young, it's not that spicy. So I'm going to just put in all four in the mortar and pestle. Okay, now we're going to throw it all in the mortar and pestle. Okay. 
Now we're going to get to smashing, smashing. This is the sound that I would just hear <laughs> from the kitchen. This is a very familiar sound. My mom was always just pounding something, making sauces. We're just about done mortar and pestling. Now, let's get this on the pan. I've got a big pan preheated on low, and now I'm gonna add some lard to the pan. If you don't have lard, you can use avocado oil, coconut oil, um, tallow, just no vegetable oils. Use some kind of good fat. <laughs> That's a little loud. Okay, we're gonna pop that in there. Now we're gonna start cooking the peppers and the garlic. Make sure you adjust the heat. Keep it low, medium, because you don't want it to burn. You don't want all that garlic to burn. Keep it moving. Now once that's fragrant, we're going to add the ground beef. We're going to hike the heat up to medium, medium high. Make sure you break up the beef. Now I'm going to add some salt, season the meat up. This dish is so easy to make, minimal ingredients, and instead of eating out, cooking at home means you know exactly what's in your food. Because the problems that can arise when eating out is that you don't know what kind of oils they're using. Okay, we're gonna add our oyster sauce. We've got the meat cooked until it's about a little bit pink. Now we're gonna add the oyster sauce. I can't give you a measurement here. My mom just eyeballs it. Um, I mean, let's just say two pounds of ground beef. I used about half a cup of oyster sauce. And now we're gonna add the thin soy sauce. We're just going to shake it in there. I would say about a quarter of a cup here. Now you want this to be really flavorful. Now we're gonna add our sugar. I'm just gonna use half of this, so I would say about half a tablespoon. Traditionally, pad kapao in Thailand is made without any kind of sauce. It's pretty dry because it's known to um, because it's known to be a picnic food. So they don't want the rice to be soggy. Um, but here, I like it a little saucy. Cody does too. So we're gonna add a little bit of water. Now we're gonna stir it all up. Keep it on high here and just keep stirring. Okay, the beef is just about done. We're gonna turn off the heat. Last thing we do is add the holy basil. All of that in there. Just fold the holy basil in there so it wilts. What's pot kapow without a fried egg? I've got a pan preheated on medium. I'm gonna add some more lard. Get that in there. Looks like a lot of lard, but it's called fried egg for a reason. Gently place the egg in. Just gonna bathe the white with the oil. Keep a distance. Egg is done. Place it on the plate. Got my rice cooker here. The rice has cooked perfectly. Nice and fluffy, not overcooked or undercooked. You want it pretty dry. Let's get the pot kapow. You can see 
The holy basil leaves has wilted. We're gonna top that right on there. Add some more meat. I always like more meat <laughs> than rice. Now we're gonna put the fried egg on top. Slide that right on. And a little bit of the holy basil garnish right on top of there. And there you go. Beef holy basil over rice with a fried egg. Pad ka pao is a super popular dish that a lot of people order when they go to Thai restaurants. But the cool thing is now you know how to make it in the comfort of your own kitchen. Okay. All right, ooh, look at that yolk. Let's have a bite. Get a little bit of the egg. Pad ka pao. Mm. So flavorful, exactly like my mom's. Tastes just like places in Thailand. The serrano pepper has barely any heat, but you get that chili flavor. So serrano is a great substitute for bird's eye chili. If you did want to add a lot of heat or a big kick, go for using the Thai bird chilies. So there you go. Now you have another recipe to add to your arsenal that only takes 15 minutes. If you love this Pot Kapow recipe, give me a thumbs up and click subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And thanks for watching. Now I gotta get back to eating.